Hey, beautiful people, now that we have talked about multiplication, we can talk about the distributive law, which says, well, why does that put marks? Okay, which says the, the, the distributive law says that, I'll do it this way, A times B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C, um, which is kind of cool. If you're going to multiply something by things added together, you can multiply it by each of the two parts separately. And the proof of this is pretty easy. You say, okay, you start with A times B plus C, and then if you use the area model of multiplication, it's the area of A, A by B plus C rectangle. And this is actually what we were using last time when we explained long multiplication, which is to say that you can break this at some point so that this part is B and this length is C. If the full length is really B plus C, that can happen. And then you can split these two pieces into da, 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 something approximately like that, and then the skinnier one. And this is a C by A, and this is an A by B. You add those together, the combined area, and this is A times B plus A times C, again using the area model of multiplication. A rectangle with those dimensions has that thing, and therefore, da, 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 this is equal to these two combined which is all we're saying today. Um, th it's very cool. This is useful. Uh, it generally comes up in algebra, but what it could really help your multiplication tables. Now, next up is going to come division. Um, and so many people had just never learned their multiplication tables. And it's really, really a, a big deal. It causes trouble. Um, you need to learn the multiplication tables. The cool thing is, um, most of them are easy. Uh, there's, uh, everything's copied. You know, 3 times 8 is the same as 8 times 3. And um, what else was I going to say? Uh, <laughs> and the few that you need to learn, you can just learn a few things and then get past it. And you'll feel good about yourself when you know it. And so much of math will become easier. Um, and anyway, the distributive law is, is useful. For example, let's say we have 8 times 8. Okay, and let's say you don't know what 8 times 8 is. But we could turn that second 8 into, let's say, a 5 plus 3. And the distributive law says this is 8 times 5 plus 8 times Three. Now, maybe you don't know 8 times 8, but you know your 5s. You know 8 times 5 is 40, and maybe you know things multiplied by 1 times 2 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24, and then together you get 64. So it's an indirect way. The, the, the distributive law, so if you just know everything up to 5, you could use this to learn just about anything else. Um, or here's a cool trick. Um, let's say 6 times 9, right? People have trouble with, with their nines tables. 6 times 9 is the same thing as 6 times 10 minus 1. And the distributive law says that this is 6 times 10 plus 6 times negative 1 is really just negative 6. And so this is 60 minus 6, which we can tell is 54. Now watch this. Um, the 4 and the 6 add up to 10 because you were pulling it away from something that ends in 0. But then the 60 became 1 less. So the 4 is something that adds to your number to get 10. And this is 1 less than your number. So together, it's going to be 1 less than the number. Um, ah, this is out of control. Sorry. But anyway, 5 plus 4 is 9, right? 1 less than 10. And, and that's, that's the, the, the trick. Is 7 times 9 is, well, you could do 70 minus 7 or 63. Or what you do is you say it's going to be not in the 70s, but one less in the 60s. And the two digits add up to, to 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. 5 plus 4 is 9. That works for the 9 tables. Very nifty thing. So um, this even works with algebra. Dun, 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 dun. This works with algebra. You can do something like um, ax times 2x minus 7. Remember, um, 
no symbol means multiplication. Anyway, and what does this mean? It means 8x times 2x plus 8x times negative 7. And 8x times 2x is 16x squared, and 8 times negative 7 is negative 56x. That's another one of the tricky ones to remember. Um, but there's only, there's only a half a dozen or so really tricky ones. Uh, to reverse this, to go 16x squared minus 56x, to somehow know that both of these have an 8 in it, and they both have an x in it, and that this one would be, uh, what would we need? Uh, you need a 2, and we need another x. And then this, we already have the x, so we need a negative 7. That's called factoring. We'll do that later. Um, but the one last thing that I wanted to say is that this explains units. Ah, explains the law of units, which is why nobody else calls it the law of units, because everybody else calls it the distributive law, which is to say three cats plus five cats. I told you, again, no symbol. Da, 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 means multiplication. This is three times cats plus five times cats. Now, if we take the, uh, what was it? Uh, well, we have the a times b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c. But because of the commutative law, uh, commutative law, we have a, b is equal to b, a. We could switch this around. So basically what we have here is like b plus c times a is going to be b times <coughs> b times a plus c times a. But anyway, it, what it does is it means you can go 3 plus 5 times cats, which is 8 cats. Now, obviously, <laughs> you don't have to do it out that way. This is just um, explaining why the law of units. When you have two things with the same units, it's like you can factor out that unit. Uh, and if they were cats and donuts, you just couldn't do that. You couldn't combine the 3 and the 5 in any sensible way. Uh, that's enough for today. Have a great day.